Oh my gosh, guys. I chopped off all my hair and it is feeling real short. I'm really enjoying it though. Like, except for the ponytail. The ponytail is like a little bit on the short side and I have to use like 3,000 bobby pins to like keep it in a ponytail. But other than that, it's great. Hello everyone, I'm here today to share with you guys a video that you guys have requested. I asked you on Insta Story if you wanted me to do a video where I would sit down with all of the products that I bought from my Ulta haul on Sunday. And all of you guys wanted to see me test it out, do a full day wear test where I check out the product, I show you guys an update at the end of the day, we'll see how everything wears, and you guys had some favorites too. You had some strong opinions about which products you wanted to see. Not that I expect anything less because I also have strong opinions. So I picked up the products that you guys wanted to see, we we're going to test it out on my face today, we're going to do a full kind of zoom in close, like really see every single pore on my skin. We're going to see what the glitter is looking like, hopefully it's not all underneath my eyes because I actually have to go to an event tonight so that wouldn't be great so grab yourself a tea or a coffee get really comfy I envision all of you like bundled up in like big knit blankets right now because that's usually how I see like the photos you send me on insta story everyone's all bundled up on the couch and I'm very jealous I'm sorry if it feels like I'm calling you out right now if you are currently sitting on your couch with a blanket on Matilda put down a ghoster make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss out on new videos every Thursday and Sunday and also on my Rachel's life channel I do new videos there every Saturday we test out recipes we do vlogs stuff decor I just put up actually today I'm putting up kind of like a walking through like a speed decorating my house for Christmas kind of a thing and we do like a big winter wonderland lots of metallics and whites and greenery a little pop of red I will link it at the end of the video for you guys enjoy and without further ado let's get into this okay now that we're zoomed in I have my brows done I'm gonna go on to insta store here and just see what color you guys wanted me to do for the eyes. So basically I had picked up, based on my haul, lots of gold glitters and lots of purple, very specifically purple. And so I asked you guys what shade you wanted me to do and it looks like gold and bronzes is the winner. So that's what we're gonna do. Though there are a lot of votes for the purple. So I think what I'm gonna do, yeah, I think what I'm gonna do is I will do a look and put it up on Instagram with my favorite of all of the purples that I tried. So go and check it out on Instagram. I will put it up there. And the other thing I wanted to test out is the Emily Edit palette. I picked this up, fellow YouTuber, um, and she has the Needs palette and the Wants palette. I found the Needs palette in Ulta. So that is what we are gonna try out today. It has a bronzer, a blush, and a highlight, as well as a, well, I don't know what that is. What is that? Kindness. Four, is that another highlight? And then a bunch of like more neutral colors for the eyes. So I thought I would play around with those. And then a bunch of like the bronzy glitters on the lid. And just for clarification, I don't actually know Emily personally I know she's a youtuber I watch her videos I think she's great um, but I don't know her personally I know there's been a lot of controversy around these palettes and kind of the quality of them and here and there and everything I'm gonna give you guys my honest opinion I wanted to purchase it because I want to support her and her collaboration that she did with makeup revolution I love that she has the needs and the wants palette I think that's really cool and like I want to support her in that and I hope these are all really good but I just want you guys to know then I'm gonna tell you guys what I think, what I like, what I dislike, and all that stuff. Not that you guys would think any differently, but I wanted to clarify that because this collaboration has had sort of that drama surrounding it. So in terms of the palette, I love the fact that it has a giant mirror in it. I think that's great. I wish this was a lighter shade. This is a little bit on the dark kind of yellow tone for me personally, um, but that's just like a personal preference thing. So I'm gonna start by just priming my lids with a primer that I know I like and that works well for me and has worked for a lot of eyeshadows. Um, so this is the NARS, what, what is this? The NARS Tinted Smudge Proof Eyeshadow Base. This is the light one, really like it. And now I'm gonna go in with the shade Love and I'm going to dust that basically all over the upper part of the lid. I'm gonna make this kind of like my base shade. And then let's go in with Peace. I'm gonna use the same brush. This is a Sigma Tapered Blending E40. And then I'm going to put that more into the crease. This is a very, very light shade. If you have a paler complexion, I can see this working real well. It's also gonna be like a really nice, like blending shade. So when I go in with some of those darker colors, it's gonna fade out nicely, I feel like. Now I'm gonna go in with a slightly smaller brush and I'm going to go into probably, I'll start with Hope. I might layer, no, I'm gonna do Faith first and then Hope. It's more like a rusty shade and I don't want it to be too red so I'm going to make it a little bit let whoa that's very red make it a little less red with hope on top and then I'm just gonna blend out the edges with that beige shade piece and then kind of go over everything with the bronze shade actually courage and then I think I'm going to take 
this darker shade, actually probably a mix of these two, and apply that to the outer edge because this is looking a little like top heavy. Oh my gosh, that one spot on my eye that hates pigment. Ugh. All right, so that's what we have so far for the brown shades. They are pigmented, they are creamy. They're not too dusty in terms of formula. The shades aren't my favorite. They seem to layer well, but they're not my favorite colors. All right, so now on to the glittery stuff. So I have a whole bunch, I think I have like five here that are all in the bronzy gold shade. It was a mood. All right, so I was gonna swatch this on my arm, but I think I'm gonna swatch it on my hand because I'm covered in self tanner. And when I wash this up, I'm going to look a little crazy with two different colored arms. So the first one is the Glitter Cream Shadow from Ulta in the shade Righteous. This is more of like a straight gold with a little bit of like a glit, like a silver glitter in it. And that is like just glitter. This is what I would call more of a glitter topper than a glitter cream eyeshadow, which to me would indicate like there's some pigment underneath. It's like a gold foil base with some glitter in it. Like that's just straight glitter. This next one is by NYX. It is Glitter Goals in the shade Polished Pinup. Ooh, that one I like. That one again has the flecks of gold and silver in it, but it has like a peachy base to it. Oh. Okay, that one so far is my favorite. I mean, I've only swatched two, but it's fine. Then on to the Flower Beauty Warrior Glitter Shadow, and this is in Bullet. And this one is much more watery in terms of a consistency. It does have the color base, but less glitter, if that makes sense. The glitter moves around a lot because the formula is so like liquidy, very, very watery almost. Don't like that as much. Next up are the Alme Velvet Foil Cream Eyeshadows. These are supposed to be like 24 hour wear eyeshadows. That is like a diluted foil. Like this to me is a very like, hi, I wanna wear something that's a little bit shiny, but not too crazy. And I want it to last in my eyes all day, something for like work or school. This isn't as like pow as I want, but I see what they're going with with that. That one, by the way, is Golden Vibes. So let's try this next one, which is Astro Girl. They are very soft. This one has like a lot more of like a glitter to it. And it's almost like a duochrome, it's like a blue kind of shift to it. It's not something that I'm looking for right now, today. So like maybe I'll test those another time. And I feel like there's one more that I'm missing. Oh, this one by NYX. This is the um, Foil Play Cream Eyeshadow. And this is in, um, this is in Beauty Buzz. Pretty sure I swatched this in the store and I was pretty excited about it. Oh, look at that. See, that is super reflective. I don't know if you guys can see the difference. This one, super foiled, this one, very like minorly foiled. So I think today, based on the swatches, I think I want to do the the NYX one, Glitter Goals, but maybe I want to layer it on top of the foil one. Oh yeah, let's do that. The more the merrier, am I right? I mean, can you really have too much glitter on your eyes? I feel like no. Ooh, ooh, okay. Okay, I like that. Like I haven't even put that much on, but I'm excited. The color to it is like, perfection. It's that perfect shade of like ivory gold, not too yellow, not too beige. I wonder how it applies with like a brush so I can make it a little bit more precise. Not very well. It's not picking up at all. Let's try, where's that like Huda Beauty brush thing? That's like a, not a brush. Here we go, this guy. This is supposed to be specifically for this type of product. So it has like a silicone end and then like a typical cheap eyeshadow end i don't know okay i don't like this end as much with this product let's try the other end nope don't like that either hands it is oh my gosh can you guys see that oh i just keep layering it i should probably stop but i can't okay let's put a little bit of the glitter goals on top and just see how that changes things i just feel like a little bit of glitter on top of a foil am i right i like the applicator i like the shine obviously i need to like blend out that edge a lot but like you can see the difference there. This is just a little bit more punchy. Again, just like dramatic over the top. It's, it's glitter. But the wand is nice and easy to apply the color either in like big thick strokes or you can use the end for something that's a little bit more precise. Now I'm just gonna go over the line there with more from the Emily Edit palette and just make that a little bit more seamless. 
little bit more blended. It's a yes from me for NYX for like glitter products. I'm gonna go in and just add some black to the waterline. I'm not doing anything new. This is just the, um, this is the Tarte Clay Pot. I just feel like I need to like ground the lashes with something, you know? And now for mascara, we're gonna test out this one by Flower Beauty. It is the Lash Warrior, which is supposed to give you this like extravagant amount of volume. Again, percentages and mascara brands, it's like crucial. How am I supposed to know as a consumer if a mascara is good if I don't see the 150% or 2000% difference in my lashes. I need to know specifics, all about the math. The wand itself is an interesting shape. I thought it, like, is it is it curved? Is it not curved? It looks like the wand is almost straight and the little rubberized bristles on it are elongated on one side and much shorter on the other side, but more towards the outer edge. Interesting. So I'm gonna try and use the, the longer bristles on that side and then go to the shorter bristles after. Assume that makes sense. It's a little bit on the clumpy side, but it's definitely giving me like length with my lashes. Do I have to position it the other way though to like get the like longer bristles on the outside of the eye again? I feel like I'm gonna get mascara all over the bridge of my nose. And now onto some lashes that you guys all wanted to see like really badly. And I don't blame you, I was very curious. That's why I bought it. And they are the Ilure. I just took it out of the package. It's the Ilure Luxe Magnetic Mink Effect Lashes. And these are the Corner Lash Baroque. I believe is what it's called. They're reusable for up to 15 wears, though we all know I'm gonna make that at least 25. Although I don't understand why there's a specific number because there's no glue involved in this process. So like, how do you have a specific number of wears out of it? What you get in the package is a pair of bottom, so underneath the lash, and then a top one that kind of sandwiches in between. And what makes these a little bit different and unique, this is actually the top and this is the bottom, whoops, is that the bottom ones are much longer than the top ones. So you avoid, hopefully, the whole effect where it looks like there's like a big cement block of lashes, which is what my experience has been with these magnetic things. It's just, they look really clunky. It doesn't look natural at all. The lashes, like the quality of them themselves is terrible, but these look like really nice. So here's hoping. So it says to start with the top section of the magnetic lash, lay it on top of your natural lashes at the outer edge of the eye. Okay, I can do that. And then it says to take this and apply it underneath. Whoa, it's a strong magnet. So that it clasps with the magnet. Like that. Let's try and like fluff them up a little bit. There's like a little chunk right there. Okay, now that I'm actually like looking around, they are very heavy and like a little bit slanted downwards, like in my vision a bit. So let me take them off and like try and readjust them a little bit. Okay, okay, I think I think I made them work. So I will say the one thing about these is that you wanna make sure if you are gonna get them, like I'm gonna see how long wearing they are. We'll, we'll see what they look like by the end of the night. I am taking a risk wearing these out in public, but we're gonna try it just for the YouTubes. But I found that the best way to put them on is to make sure when you put the top one on to lay it almost like upright and then take the bottom lash and kind of like smush it up against like the waterline basically. And that's gonna make it look as seamless as possible. But one, I feel like it's something that you just get used to over time and it gets easier and easier as you do it. But in terms of the blendability, the fluffiness, how it looks, like I found this eye was a lot harder to do than this eye, but like, I like them so far. Who knew someone can master these magnetic lashes? You know what? Yeah, yeah, no, I like these. So we're gonna move on to the skin makeup now, and I was kind of torn between two different um, primers. So one is by Flower Beauty. It is their Supernova Celestial Skin Elixir, which is also a primer, and it has like good for you skincare benefits in it as well. And then the Revlon Photo Ready Rose Glow Hydrating and Illuminating Primer. They're both kind of similar, and I feel like they're feeding off the whole like Farsali um, products that they have. I'm, I have one right here actually. This one, for example, is a favorite of mine. This is the Skin Tune Blur Perfecting Primer. It's a great one, blurs out the skin, beautiful, but that whole like dropper vibe with like good for you ingredients in it, feel like they're getting it from here. So I haven't checked where you guys are at with that one. So let's see, let's pull it up on Insta Story. Very close race. Like we're off by like a hundred votes here. Oh, oh. You know what? It seems like you guys just want to see both of them. So I'm going to split down my face. I'm going to do one half with the Revlon and one half of the Flower Beauty. And we're going to see which one looks better. So we'll start with the Revlon. We'll do Revlon right. So this, according to the website, is a water-based primer. It's infused with botanical extract, extracts. 
can't speak English today. Extracts, luminous quartz, and skin hydrating beads. It does have the beads in them. I can see them. Rub it in the hands to melt the oil beads and apply it on the face. Oh, I should have done less because I'm only doing half the face. Whoops. It's very lightweight. I don't feel like I'm putting anything on. It does have a little bit of tackiness to it, which I guess is good if you're trying to apply like a foundation on top. Nothing too crazy, but it is there. It's also very, very glittery. Like I'm seeing glitter chunks on my skin that were not there before, and it's definitely not the glitter eyeshadow. It's, it's all over my hand. So don't love that. I'm gonna go wash my hands and then I'm gonna put on the Flower Beauty just so I'm not transferring glitter if this one doesn't have the same glitter in it. And the Flower Beauty one seems like it's pretty similar. It has antioxidants in it, pearlescent pigments. Ooh, this one has a very, a much stronger scent to it. Yeah, it smells, it smells luxurious. Kind of like a nice spa. And this one is much oilier than the, the Revlon one. This one, like, I feel like I'm applying an oil to the skin. I am seeing a hint of glitter on my skin from the Flower Beauty one as well. Not as much, not as, like, chunky as on the Revlon side, but it is there as well. So now I've given it a couple of minutes to sink into my skin. We're going to go on to foundation, and a lot of you guys wanted me to try out the Ulta Beauty one. This is the HD Soft Focus Liquid Foundation. And this is supposed to be a medium buildable coverage foundation that lasts all day. It has silica microspheres in it to like help scatter light, refine pores, create a flawless looking complexion. And it's HD Soft Focus, so it's gonna blur the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles. And I think it also has some ingredients in here that are supposed to help prevent the loss of elasticity in your skin to keep it nice and firm. So like, I don't know, so sounds good to me. And I like the consistency, I like the feel of it in my hand when I was swatching them in the store. I hope I got the right shade. I tried my best, but like, it's hard to tell sometimes. So I'm gonna put some on the back of my hand here. And what I've been doing recently that I've really enjoyed is I've been applying the foundation with more of like a flat brush. This is MAC um, 190 and I'll apply it all over with this brush and then blend it all out with a big fluffy brush. Not big fluffy brush, but like a fluffier brush. And it just gives this like really flawless look to the skin, which is really pretty. So I'm just applying a little bit at the time. I don't wanna go super over the top because I don't know how well this is gonna build up like that. Okay, now that I've like applied it all over, I'm gonna take a much fluffier brush and I'm just going to kind of rub over it to blur everything out and just really help the product like melt into the skin, give it a nice like really soft effect. I can still see my skin through the foundation, which you know is a clear sign that it is a very medium coverage foundation. I am trying to build it up a little bit because I just want to see how much you can build it up to a fuller coverage. But I believe like it said it's buildable, right? Medium buildable. So. What does that mean? That it's just, it's gonna keep building up medium or can like you build it up to full? I put a little bit more on my cheeks here cause I have a little bit of redness. I'm just gonna see if I can like buff that in and make it look a little bit more covered. I'm just gonna have to go a little bit heavier with concealer over any areas that I want more full coverage. But if you like a medium coverage, I mean, maybe this lasts a long time. Maybe it looks good by the end of the night. We'll go and find out. It's like a little sparkle showing through my foundation. Don't like that. Okay, I'm gonna go put on concealer because I didn't have a new one that I found in store and I'll be right back. Oh guys, I don't think I'm a big fan of this foundation. Like it is not like melding into my skin, especially in the T-zone area. Like all of my pores are on like prominent display. Oh, this doesn't look good. No. No, I don't like how this looks on my skin. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to take this off. Like I genuinely don't like how my skin looks and the fact that I'm going out tonight and it's getting a lot darker. Did anyone else notice that? Like even if this is supposed to be medium coverage and that's great, I don't like how this is sitting on my skin. No, no, don't like it. Okay, we took it all off. I put back on the primers, then I put on a foundation that I know works. So now we're gonna go on to powder. This is by a beauty bakery and this is their flower setting powder. And this is the translucent one. And I've heard so many good things about this and the brand in general. Let me know in the comment section and by giving this video a thumbs up if you want me to do like a full buy or buy on Beauty Bakery. I feel like I wanna try more from this brand. Plus like look how adorable this packaging is. Like it's like 
flour. It's like a bag of flour, get it? We're gonna blend out any creases on the skin. And then let's put some of this on. The translucent powder has a little bit of a yellow undertone to it. You can see it there, very pale, not quite white. So I'm just gonna take my little velour puff and we're gonna pack a little bit anywhere that I would tend to get really oily or anywhere that I just wanna set. A little bit more concealer on this little guy. Whoa, that is way too light. I'm on fire today. So far I like the effect. It's like really making my skin look super, super flawless. It is making my pores look completely minimized. It's setting everything in place. I really like this so far. Ooh, this is really nice. For bronzer today, I'm gonna try a little bit of this um, ABH one, the powder bronzer. Dust a little bit of that on. And then let's take a little bit of the blush from the Emily Edit palette. This like nice, kind of a corally color. I really like that. I don't love the pan size considering the size of the brush that I am attempting to use, not my favorite, but the color is pretty. I do like the color. Oh, and we should probably finish up underneath the eyes too. I'm gonna take um, just some of these shades right here and we're just gonna blend them all under, make it all smoky. Now for highlight today, I'm gonna be testing one out from a palette by Beauty Bakery again. This is the Milk and Honey palette. Um, and they swatched really pretty in the store. So I'm gonna try out spoiler alert. I'm gonna mix it a little bit with Be Sweet, just a tiny bit, just to warm it up because it feels a little bit cool tone for me. And now we're like basically complete now. So now I'm gonna try out the Morphe Continuous Setting Mist because literally every YouTuber and their mom seems to be obsessed with this setting spray. And so I saw it in store and I was like, why not? I'm gonna spray this on. And what I find that a lot of YouTubers seem to do is they seem to let it dry and then they do like another coat. Round number two. I just wanna try out this gloss. This is by Beauty Bakery. Again, I picked up a lot of stuff by Beauty Bakery. Get out of your shop. This is a long lasting gloss in the shade Snickerdoodle. It's their Lip Whip. And I just really liked this shade. It was really pretty when I swatched it. This is just a good classic, your lips but better shade. It's really pretty, nice and smooth. It's not sticky in any way, like I like it so far. So I'll pack this in my purse, we'll use this for touch-ups. This is kind of what it's looking like so far. I have some products I like, some that I don't like. We'll see what I think of everything. So I will be back in a little bit. Okay guys, it is now at the end of the day and this is what my makeup is looking like. It's got like real close up here. And I feel like I have some thoughts on the way my makeup is looking. First of all, I love my eye makeup right now. Like it's just, it's sparkling, it's shining. I love the little corner lashes on the side. Like I will be using those again. Will be using that glitter combo from NYX again. And the eyeshadows, like the, um, the mattes, from the Emily Edit palette are really nice. The overall color scheme isn't my like personal favorite. I and I don't love the little um, the oval shape for the highlight and the blush and the bronzer. Though the shades are nice, that's just a personal preference thing for me. Um, but the quality of them, like it's it looks really good with this eye look, and it was blending out really nicely. Um, the primers were not my favorite. I don't really like how my foundation is currently sitting on my face. The highlight actually looks really good. I wasn't really that sure about it when I first tested it out, but I do like how it looks in the light and like, I think I'll have to play around with that one again. The powder, I think that I like it though, because I don't like the primers, I want to kind of test it out again, but I really liked how my makeup was looking when I first applied it and it just really blurred everything out really beautifully. And by the way, I think it's the primers because I can see like the little glitter flecks like on, like right up here on my forehead and areas like that. Just the foundation sitting weird, but like it's fine underneath my eyes and I was applying the powder there. But yeah, I think my favorite out of everything that I tried today, number one, the lashes, love those. I'm gonna play around with those more and like just kind of test and figure out how I like to wear them the best. And then also the glitters on the eyes, I think are phenomenal. I think they just look so good, obsessed, will continue to use. I did actually also like the lip gloss. 
like the snickerdoodle shade was like really really nice like i will be using that again but yeah that is what my makeup is looking like leave me a comment down below let me know what your favorite product was of everything that i talked about today and like a product that you want to pick up any products out there that you're interested in make sure you check out the videos on the side i don't know what side i put them on every single time i'm like i'm gonna remember this time rachel but check out the videos on the side if you are interested in seeing like a home tour my christmas decorating and all that stuff lots of white and metallics and grays and like just winter wonderland i really really love it so i hope you guys enjoy it too make sure you subscribe to rachel's life and rachel loves and i will see you guys all in my next video love you all Mwah.